All I got to say is this, y'all. Basketball Wives, it was actually pretty good. Let's get into this review, y'all. And what's good, you guys? This is your boy, Scott About Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new review of Basketball Wives Season 10, Episode 14, okay? This is Season 10B, and I got to say that this episode was absolutely great, okay? I enjoyed the hell out of this episode. I hope you guys did, too. Um, I do know that when Jennifer did an interview with Carlos King on his podcast, she did say that 10B was done by different producers. It's not the same producers as 10A. And she said, you will see the difference in the production. You will see the difference in the storytelling. And I must say that I see the difference in everything. It was actually enjoyable. I definitely enjoyed this episode. I can't even front on y'all. I enjoyed the hell out of it. And I can't wait to see how it unfolds. Now, before we get into um, this review, because like I said, I'm very excited about it. I know I love this basketball wise, even though they had their shit with them. I love it. But, um, it's voting season, okay? So make sure you guys are voting for me, okay? For Boss Babe YouTuber of the Year as well as Boss Babe Podcast of the Year with Jamar84. Voting stops on March the 1st, so you got all month to continue to put in your votes, okay? So make sure you guys are voting. Make sure you guys are doing the thug thizzle. Make sure the Scotty gang is in the building, okay? Make sure you guys are in the building, making sure that I get what I need and um, all of that stuff. But I trust you guys to do so. I trust you guys to, you know, to, 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 to put y'all word in for me. I really do. I really appreciate all the love and support that we have gotten so far with these awards and with the voting. I really do appreciate it all, okay? And I am... Um, working very hard to give you guys the content and all of the things that you guys want from me as a content creator. So I thank you guys for all of your love and all of your support so far. All right. So with that being said, y'all, we're about to go ahead and get into this review, which is Basketball Wives. Okay. Um, One more thing um, before we get into the review, I almost forgot. Um, um, I think it drops tonight. Josiah just got done editing that video and he just sent it to Terrence. So there should be a video with the whether you like it or not best moments of the season. It, and it's going to be on Terrence's channel. And then there's going to be a second half of it that's going to be on Josiah's channel. So um, the first half should be dropping tonight because as far as what Josiah said in a group text, um, he did send um, T the video today. So um, shout out to, to Josiah putting in the hard work for us. And all of that good stuff, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the review for today, all right? So the episode opens up in a pretty... It, the, the way the episode opened up, though, the way it opened up, it was very... Um, it kind of threw me off because we all know by now that her daughter passed away, right? And I'm thinking that that particular scene has something to do with her crying about her daughter. But we got to realize that a lot of this was... This whole damn season, this, this whole half... You know, the second half of this season was filmed in late 2021 on into early 2022. Cause So some of this shit is almost two years old at this point. We're looking at almost two-year-old footage at this point. It's basically her in tears crying about what's going on in her marriage with Steve. Now, I'm going to tell y'all this. Before um, the last season was over with, I told y'all that I felt like Steve was not necessarily in this marriage for real, for real. She wanted to have babies. She wanted to do all of this stuff, but he wasn't really into it the same way she was. And I just felt like he never was excited about having no kids with her, nothing like that. And she was ready to have a child by him because she got kids with somebody else. He got kids with somebody else. They've been married for a while. So she wanted to have a baby with her husband. And you know what? I mean, I understood that she, no matter how old she was, because I think Brooke is now in her forties now, no matter how old she might, she may be at this point, she wanted to have a baby with her husband. She wanted something that her and her baby, you know, her and her husband can call their own, which is a child. So I understood that. But now they're at they're at a they're at a weird space right now because she knows what he's been doing. She knows what he did already, and it's not sitting well with her. And to be quite honest, I mean, I don't blame. Her. I mean, it wouldn't sit well with me if my man was out here cheating on me and doing all that crazy stuff to me. That's just how I feel about it. So I definitely understand that. So I'm like, okay, this 
Brooke got a storyline and she finna work that storyline to the best of her ability. And she needs to because she damn sure didn't have one that first half of the season. Jennifer and Jelani. Now, you know, Jennifer was like, when I went to Duffy's um, meat party, I did not know that I was going to walk out with a man that I really, really like. And now I'm in an exclusive relationship with Jelani and I'm really happy. I found me a perfect gentleman and I'm happy at this point. And y'all know I don't really care for Jennifer like that. Y'all know I don't. But at the end of the day, it's nice to see her happy. We've seen her going through a lot of stuff, especially with Eric, you know, the man with the legs, hips and body, you know him, the sweetie pie man. She went through a lot of stuff with him and some dude that she was dating stole her fucking car. So she's been going through a whole lot of stuff with men. So to see Jelani, you know, giving her what she wants and what she needs, it's amazing. You know, she, you know, he, you know, he, they was going out there. You know, she did say they was going out to eat and doing a lot of stuff like that together at one point in time. He was like, yeah, we, we was at the honeymoon stage. Now we at some at another point. But I do want to take you out for brunch with my parents. You feel what I'm saying? So it's gotten to that point now. And she's like, oh, my God. You know, once you get involved with somebody and then you meet the parents, it's a whole nother situation. So I'm very nervous. I'm very excited, but I'm very nervous. But we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. And I think that the parents may like Jennifer. You know, I don't as much as I don't care for Jennifer like that, I don't think that she's a bad person. And I don't really think that she's a bad person for Jelani to date either. Um, She she got her shit with her. Don't get me wrong. She do. But I don't think that um she's a bad person to date at all. I think that um it's going to go well with him, with her and, you know, the parents and stuff like that. I do because Jennifer... She has a good um, personality. I'm. It, it may be a little bit bougie and stuck up, but as far as like to take a woman home to your mama, I feel like she is the perfect. I ain't gonna say perfect, but she is a woman that you know. If I was a straight man, I would take home to my mama house. To be honest, I would. Jennifer's a beautiful girl. You know what I mean. She has a lot of life experience, so why not? And that's all the niceness and I'm going to give her ass. So we're going to move on to Jackie and Malaysia. Okay. Now y'all know that I ain't really been on team Malaysia for a while now. You know, I've been giving her the blues ever since season eight. You know, I mean, give her the blues. Now we're going to see what, what she's going to give this time around. They discussed Gennaro. Okay. Now, you know, she said, well, you know what I've been going through with my ex-husband. And, you know, now I've been hearing that because I said all that stuff about him, you know, dealing with the child, supporting him, not paying. He sent me a cease and desist where, you know, he don't want me to say his name in child support at the same fucking time. So she was like, well, you know, when we was filming the show, you know, it took a lot. Like he was talking about the cease and desist long before the episodes even came out. So apparently he had to find out from somewhere. And I think one of the ladies did it. My thing about it is how will I don't think how would one of the ladies even know what you got going on when you wasn't even opening up to none of them about um your ex-husband um not paying child support. I don't know, Malaysia. I think you kind of reaching with this one. I don't really think nobody cared that much to go and run to your ex-husband and tell him anything because anybody could have told your ex-husband. Production could have told him. I don't think none of the women really went back and told Gennaro about what was about what you were saying on the show because at the end of the day he was going to see it anyway so what what would be the purpose of them running back telling Gennaro anything about what you're saying in front of the camera when you're going to put it out there and to be honest I feel like this I think it's a um I think that is um very uh convenient for her to blame some of the women for this when I feel like at some point, he was going to know that you said it because the show was coming out. So it really don't matter who told him. He was probably going to still file a cease and desist against your ass regardless because you said it in front of the cameras. It was going to be on the show. So what are you talking about? I don't think anybody went back and told him. I just think that that's your mind, and I'm not really certain. I don't know, but it is what it is. Um, So Jackie starts asking Malaysia, how does she feel about... um? about returning uh, to the foe. And she was like, well, you know, I've been trying to really, you know, relate to these women. I've been trying to do this with these women. I've been trying to do that with these women. It just seems like, you know, I just can't really get along with them. I can't really, you know, I don't have a safe space with these women. So I don't mind putting things to the back burner and moving past everything, but I just don't need no unnecessary drama. I got enough shit going on in my life. I don't need all this bullshit going on, honestly. I just don't need it. And to be honest, I really don't blame her, honestly. Even though I really ain't been on her side at all, honestly, I just feel like at the end of the day, you know, don't nobody really want to deal with that. Okay. So that's how I feel. 
<clears throat> so yeah, she don't she don't mind dealing with the ladies, but at the last, you know, she really ain't talked to nobody since that last event that she was at, and she walked off. So yes, I understand that. Um, so we get Brooke, Brandy, and British. Okay, now Brandy and British come over to visit Brooke. Okay, and that's when Brooke starts. Um, you know, they want to get Brooke. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So uh, they come by to visit Brooke because they know that Brooke been dealing with a lot of stuff. And um, Brooke starts telling a story about how she went through her husband's phone. Now, she said that um, she felt, you know, her intuition told her that there was something going on with her husband and she really didn't know. Her husband was asleep. His phone was still open. She went through the phone and then she saw all these messages between him and another woman at this point. So she knew at this point that he was cheating on her. And then when he woke up, he seen her looking through the phone. He had a dumb look on his face. And ever since then, she's been like, okay, I I'm over it. Like, we were sitting up here planning a life together, trying to have some more babies, trying to do this, trying to do that. And then you turn around and you throw all of this stuff that we had going on away. So, it's so you know, it's difficult for Brooke right now. Brandy said that she's been through the same thing that Brooke has, and she never wants to go through that again. You know what I mean? But my thing with Brandy is, I don't know with Brandy, and y'all know I go up for Brandy. I know a lot of people don't, but I go up for her. But my thing with Brandy is, she feel like just because she took back her husband that slept around with thousands of women, she feel like everybody's supposed to take their husband back when they cheat. No, not necessarily. I don't have to take back nobody that decided they want to stick their dick up in Tom, Dick, and Harry, whoever walked past them. I don't have to take them back. And I don't know why people always feel like you have to take somebody back when they constantly disrespect you. Because if somebody going to continue to do that, once a cheater, I ain't going to say once a cheater, always a cheater, because sometimes people make mistakes. Okay, let's just be honest. Some people can make mistakes. Everybody ain't perfect. But with Brandy's situation, she should have been left her husband. I'm just being honest. But who am I to tell somebody who they should have left? Because I done stayed with niggas and they did me dirty, took money from me, did all types of stuff. So who am I to judge? You see how that goes? So, but I would never try to tell, I would never tell Brooke to stay with her husband after he cheated on her, nor would I tell her to leave her husband. I'll just try to see what would be the best decision for her, to be quite honest. And, you know, Brooke said, you know, Brandy was like, well, what do you want to do? And Brooke said, I'm going to divorce him. And then Brandy was like, well, I'm just trying to make sure that you're not making a decision just because you are angry. And then Brooke was like, no, do you really believe that I'm going to sit up here and, you know, continue to be with somebody who can't keep their dick in their pants and try to have a baby with them and try to continue on a relationship with them and they can't even do that right? Like, fuck now, nah, I'm not going to do that. And to be honest, I don't really blame Brooke for feeling the way that she do. I mean, don't nobody want to deal with somebody like that. It's just that simple. Like, I don't want to deal with that. Like, I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to deal with that. And I don't blame Brooke for not wanting to deal at all. I just don't blame her for that at all. Like she got every right to feel the way that she feels about this situation with her husband and every damn thing else. She got every right. She got every right. She got every right. She got every right. Period. Okay. Um, so after that, British Duffy. The British and Duffy. British started discussing her case. You know, you know, she's still going through the stuff with the with the fraud allegations and shit like that. They want Brooke to get out the house, so they want to throw like this birth, not not a birthday party, but they want to throw a party for Brooke, you know, to make her feel good, get her out the house. You know what I mean? And I don't see nothing wrong with that. You know, just be down with your friend, you know, try to make your friend feel better. You know, a good thing about having good friends when you're going through a situation like somebody cheating on you or your marriage falling apart, you got to have good friends around you to really help you get through that and, and just you know, go through it. Cause I know most of the women on the show have been through what Brooke is going through. So it's a nice thing that they want to come together and just throw this party for her. So after that, there's the parents brunch. Of course, they're going to ask her. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before that, they discuss inviting Malaysia, you know, because Malaysia have had issues with a lot of them. British is pressed. Um, I feel like she is. Um, I do feel like British and Malaysia really don't have no real issues. I just think that British is really following the leader with Brandy. But I do think that British ain't never like Malaysia because they didn't get along in season three. You know, they got into it almost thought in season three. And I and I think that British still got those preconceived notions about Malaysia, to be honest. But um, I think that at some point we should just try to give her a break at this point. I still don't fuck with Malaysia like that. I still think she phony as hell after the shit that she pulled the last two, the last two, what, the last three seasons, like three seasons ago with the OG and the, and the CC and Kristen thing. I feel like she phony as fuck. And the way she quickly turned on Jackie 
and all the other stuff like I still don't fuck with her like that, but I do think we should give her some grace just right now. Just let's just let her open up and see what's going on, you know, and see what's going on in her life. So we get into the parents' brunch, okay? They start talking about what her intentions is with Jelani. You know, it's all nervousness. Of course, it's nervousness. I mean, whatever. I mean, what are you talking about? Like you meet somebody's parents. Of course, it's gonna be nervous. Like I ain't never met no nigga parents. So I can only imagine how it's gonna be whenever I get a man. And I meet their parents. Because like I said, I never met nobody's parents before. Nobody never took me to their mama house, child. So I don't know. But they didn't been in my mama house. Go figure. They didn't been to my mama house. They wasn't at my house. They was at my mama house. Well, I never been to their mama house. They've been to my mama house. But you know, whatever. So that should let you know something. But um, where was I at? Let me see. Where was I at? I'm losing my, losing my track of thought. Oh, and then they were saying that they wanted Jelani to have like twins and triplets and shit like that. They wanted her, they want him to do that and stuff like that. And you know what? They doing they being typical parents. They want grandchildren. Jennifer, damn near old as Methuselah. She need to go on to have a damn baby right now because I know she wanna have one. But she just wanted to make sure that she with the right man. I mean, she was with Eric for all them years and never had a child by him. It was probably best that she didn't have no damn child by him because he wants shit with that damn raised and sitting on top of his head he wouldn't he wouldn't about shit no goddamn way so what the hell made her think you know made anybody think that she would ever have a baby by eric i mean i'm just saying but you know i think that the party with jelani actually went well i will say that um so after that um let's see where we at Hold on, you guys. Give me one second. Okay, y'all, sorry. I thought I smelled some fire, and y'all know we've been through a, a house fire before and a car fire. So, baby, I do not play with no damn fire. Whenever I smell that shit, I, I get nervous. So now it's time for the back in the game party, okay? Now, first, one of the first questions that somebody asked was, where's Angel and Rockstar? Has anybody seen Angel and Rockstar? And Jackie was like, no, I have not seen Angel and Rockstar, but I'm not trying to intrude on her time, you know, with the new baby and stuff like that. So, you know, Angel's going to come around. She'll come around. So then and Jackie was like, you know, is Jennifer in Malaysia being distant? You know what I mean? And, um, you know, they're fine with being where they are. You know, Malaysia don't want to sit by Jennifer. Jennifer don't want to sit by Malaysia. But Jackie keeps trying to force Malaysia on the girls and stuff like that. And I'm just like, but why? You know, just leave it alone. Don't force it. Like, I get it. Malaysia is your girl. You want everybody to get along with her and all that good stuff. And I definitely understand that. But it's not going to work like that. Like, you can't sit up and force her on them. You know, they still got issues with her. So just let it go. You know what I mean? Um, Brandy in Malaysia starts giving Brooke advice on how to deal with Steve. I think that Brandy on one hand was basically telling, you know, Brooke to take him back, you know, try to, you know, make things work because that's what she did with her lowdown trifling ass husband was trying to make things right with him when he didn't even deserve it. But Malaysia is basically saying, you don't need to wait on him to get right. It's either going to be you or your own happiness or him. And if you're not happy with him, then you don't need to be with him. And Brandy was like, well, Malaysia, did you wait on Gennaro? She said, and I did. And I had to realize that he really wasn't going to do right by me. And to be honest, Brandy, I just because you stay with, like I said, just because you stay with your fucking husband, that don't mean everybody got to stay with their cheating ass husband. They don't. And I just feel like that's that's the type of time you want. Like you're trying to tell this girl, yeah, girl, stay with your cheating ass husband. I stay with my girl. Go on, on, stay with him, girl. Stay with him. Stay with him. Girl, please. No. Let Brooke make her own decision, okay? Like y'all got experience with it. I get it. But let her make her own decision, child. So, um, Jennifer was talking about the big M word about marriage, about kids that she, that's on her mind right now. 
Um, Britta said, I'm going to get me a girlfriend. I don't know why y'all playing with me. And then Brandy and Jennifer just started laughing. And then Jackie come on. She says that she's proud of Brandy and Malaysia. And Brandy was like, I'm at peace. Like, I don't have no problem with Malaysia. Like, we're we're at peace. I could be around her. We could be around each other. We can kiki and laugh. Like, we good. So then um, that's when Duffy asked Malaysia what kind of guys she likes. And, you know, Malaysia over here trying to tell, you know, Duffy what kind of guys that she like. And Brandy asked Malaysia if she's dating. And she was like, well, we'll get into that later. You know, I ain't really got nobody special in mind, but we'll get into that at, at another time. Right. So then that's when um, Malaysia tells Brandy that she is hurt by her. Um, and um, that's when Duffy said, well, let me go away and let you guys talk to each other by yourselves. I'm going to go ahead and go away. So Brandy was like, what did I do? And that's when Malaysia was like, well, you know, things have been going on with Gennaro. And I believe that somebody went back and told him that I was going around saying that he was, you know, hadn't paid child support. And I want to know, was it you? And Brandy was like, why would I be talking to Gennaro when I don't even talk to you? So why would I be telling Gennaro anything? And then she was like, well, I'm glad to know that you didn't do it. I mean, the only reason why I asked you is because, I mean, you're the only one out of this group that actually knows Gennaro. You know what I mean? So that's why I asked you. But I just felt like I, if I was Brandy, I would have been insulted by that because I, I would have been like, regardless of whatever we're going through, do you really believe that I'm going to be that damn spiteful to go to your ex-husband and tell him about some shit that you said on TV that's going to come out in Anyway, you feel what I'm saying? I don't, I, and I know a lot of folks. I saw a lot of folks on Twitter actually believing that Brandy would do that, but I don't think Brandy would do that to Malaysia because even in, even in the last in the first part of the season, when people was coming at her at the very beginning of the season, she was actually defending Malaysia and every damn thing, even though she wasn't really fucking with her like that. So it is what it is. British is not so sure about Malaysia. You know, she feels like they just don't mesh well together, and sometimes that's just what it is. You know, there's a lot of people that Scotty don't mesh with, and I am okay with that that does not mean that i don't have a that does not mean i got a problem with them or that i got to beef with them it just means that we don't mesh well and that's just the truth sometimes you just don't mesh with people it's just it um jackie british and malaysia okay they said that brooke uh, Brent, british was saying that brooke was very happy with the party she she appreciated all this love and the support and stuff like that then they started talking about uh british's dating pool and how she got three dudes that she talking to and she really don't know how to deal with the three dudes that she's talking to then british asked jackie to stop meddling it's like stop being in everybody's business and they said that J jackie started saying that she was disappointed that malaysia and british would say that she'd be putting into their business and so british was like the girls think that you're bored because you're finding yourself in everybody else's business so jackie is living because she said that they bored they called jennifer and she said jennifer got good intentions but she needs to sometimes butt out of other folks business and i do understand where jennifer coming from jackie does have good intentions a whole lot of the time but sometimes she does need to butt the fuck out because it ain't got nothing to do with her stay out of it because that's how you get into a lot of shit when you're trying to butt in and trying to push people to be together it ain't it's just not gonna work like that um and then you know jennifer and malaysia they started having some petty back and forth over the phone and then malaysia hung up on jennifer and you know jennifer and malaysia started arguing and stuff like that so you know malaysia was like i had issues with jennifer in the past and if she want to continue to have those issues with me then she can have them by herself because i really could give a damn honestly i don't blame her but at the same time i mean if you threw a table at me then bitch we're gonna have beef forever <laughs> I'm just keeping it a book with y'all. You gonna throw a beef? You gonna throw a table at me? We gonna have beef forever, okay? Ain't no way you gonna throw a table at me and think we gonna be cool after that. Oh no, ma'am. I'm just saying. But I hopefully we dive more into their issues as the season progresses. I hope we dive more into it. But all I gotta say is this was a pretty good episode. It, you know, because a lot of people are over basketball wives, and basketball wives has been horrible since season nine it's been horrible okay so a lot of people really didn't care about it coming back a lot of people felt like you know it's running its course or whatever but this episode was absolutely great i enjoyed it and jennifer did say that this part of the season was going to be much better than the first part because they switched production teams and i could definitely see the difference okay i could see the difference with the camera quality i see the difference in the way the story being told it was great. I want to know what you guys think, though. I really do. So with that being said, you guys, this be your boy, Scatter by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on that notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. If you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below, as well as the link for the 
Boss Babe Award nominations poll. It will be right up under my social media handles in the description box. So with that being said, you guys, your boys up out of here. Until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Rest in peace, Danita. We love you. Bye. What's up, guys? It's your boy Tramel. I just wanted to say that I have a new project that's out. It's called Mixed Feelings. It's on all streaming platforms. I would hope that you would go and check it out. It's a really good feel of an album. It's got everything you need and more. It's got R&B. It's got a little bit of pop. It's got a little bit of hip hop. It's everything that you need and more. It's out all streaming platforms, like I said. Please check me out and you can also follow me at i am underscore tramel that's i am underscore t-r-a-m-e-l check me out hope to hear from you